it's kind of the equivalent of if someone were to drop a, a trash bag on your front porch. And instead of taking that trash bag and putting it in your garbage can, you just take that trash bag and you put it on somebody else's front porch, right? It's it's a bad move. It's, it's not like the scummiest thing in the world that you can possibly do. You're just moving the problem to somewhere to somebody else. But it's not great, man. It's not great. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Not and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield video. Alrighty guys, so we are back and we are back to tackle the bad. So if you guys uh, didn't see my last video or you guys aren't aware, I'm basically jumping in. I'm talking about all the different ways you can cheat in Pokemon Sword and Shield, all the different ways that people do cheat. And I'm kind of breaking them out into three different categories. So the, the fine, the bad, and the scummy. So uh, in part one, we, we talked about kind of the scummiest cheaters possible um, and really the worst of the worst. So we were talking about people who are scamming children. We're talking about people who are selling hacked Pokemon and just doing all types of shady things. If you guys didn't see that video, you can check it out here, uh, the banner or something. Uh, but totally not necessary for this part. All these parts kind of are standalone. So we're going to go ahead and jump in now to what I consider to be the middle ground of cheating, right? So as I aptly named the bad, right? Um, the final video in the series, will talk about what I actually consider is fine and, and what most of the uh, Pokemon community considers fine in the cheating world. Um, but what we're gonna talk about now is the bad. So not quite as, as scummy necessarily as scamming children or not quite as scummy as, well, you know, uh, <laughs> selling hacked Pokemon, right? Creating the problem in the first place but still pretty bad. So to do that, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at a number of different things. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch screens here and uh, we'll, we'll just jump right into it. All righty guys, so the very first thing that I wanna talk about, and I and at first off, I love this picture. <laughs> I love this picture on this article here. So Dextero, well done. Uh, but the first thing that I wanna talk about is cheating in ranked battles. So under the scummy category, I kind of threw the group of people who actually is cheating in official tournaments, official competitions, right? Because, you know, there's money on the line, there's travel on the line, a lot goes into these official tournaments. But right underneath that would be cheating in ranked battles or ranked uh, online competitions or whatever you want to call those, right? So like not the official competitions, but just the ranked competitive battles. So there's a number of different ways that people cheat. Um, the most obvious way is taking hacked Pokemon and using them in ranked battles, right? Totally cheating, totally not okay. And it really does give you an unfair advantage over someone who's playing the game legitimately, right? Because you basically will have this plethora of, of Pokemon to choose from. You can constantly update your meta team, whereas a real player, their, their options are gonna be a little bit more limited. And working within limited options is a part of what makes Pokemon fun, right? There's not always gonna be a, an answer to every fight, a counter to every Pokemon, but you have to build out a six member team as best you can with what you've got to try and counter most of the threats and make a synergistic team to do well, right? And that's what makes competitive Pokemon fun is, is being able to, to work through these limits and to do your best about countering teams, right? Um, and then there's this other way of cheating, right? Which is what this whole article is about, right? Um, so Pokemon cheat, uh, company threaten Pokemon Sword and Sealed Cheater. So in this particular case, in this article, and this wasn't too long ago, so this was uh, last year in April, right? There was a big issue with basically trainers would exploit a bug in Pokemon ranked battles so that anytime they were about to lose, they would just turn off their switch at perfectly right time and then it wouldn't count as a loss, right? This is bad, guys. I, this doesn't make you a scumbag. You're not scamming children, right? You're not selling Pokemon trying to make money, but this is still pretty bad, man. You're going into ranked battles and you're circumventing the entire process of a ranked battle, right? People, You've seen people do this in Call of Duty. You've seen people do this in every game that pretty much had a rank system trying to save their kill-death ratio. It's bad, man. It's bad. I have so little respect for people who can't take a loss when they actually get a loss. And it also breaks the ranking system, the laddering system, because people will ladder higher than they're supposed to be laddered, which actually ruins the experience for everyone, right? If if your team's not good enough and you're and you're laddering higher, then it's not gonna be a good experience for the for the higher ranked players who are gonna have to fight this weird team that doesn't belong in the top ladder. And it's not gonna be a good experience for the players that uh, are beneath you and just, you know are supposed to be playing against your team. So overall, a bad experience. Guys, please, please, please don't cheat in ranked battles. In casual battles, I don't really care as much. It's still not great. Please just honestly, just don't use hacked Pokemon online. Just don't do it. And if you if you guys lose, that's OK. It's OK. And this is I know this is going to this this sound crazy, guys, but it's OK to lose. 
I know it's it's okay. It's okay, guys. Losing is fine. It's it's an important part of uh, of playing literally any competitive game. <laughs> All right. So now that we got that off our chest, that that very controversial statement, right? Uh, we can move on. So the, the next thing that I want to talk about is not necessarily cheating in ranked battles, but just as bad, cheating against your friends, man. If your friends play Pokemon legitimately and they've been playing Pokemon legitimately for years and and you're like, hey, man, do you want a battle? And you come in with a team of uh, six, six IV, shiny, completely maxed out Pokemon and literally just stomp your friend into the dust. Come on. Like, do I, do I have to explain the problem with this? Your friend needs better friends. Don't be a scumbag. I mean, th again, this doesn't technically put you in what I would call the scum territory, but it's still pretty bad, guys. Don't don't cheat against your friends. This this is how you lose friends, right? If you have friends, if you're fortunate enough to have friends that are that are willing to play Pokemon with you, don't lose those friends by by cheating. It's it's not great. Be be a better person. Have some integrity. <laughs> All right. Like again, it's it's just a way of you know thinking about the situation, thinking about it from your friend's perspective. You guys got this. So the next thing that I want to talk about is trading away hacked Pokemon. So again, in, in the first part, we talked about scamming other people, which is what I would consider trading away a hacked Pokemon. Like, let's take this beautiful, super duper fake shiny Lapras, right? Perfect IVs. Its name is literally Pokeflash.co, right? And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about link names here. But again, if I were to take this and trade this, right? Let's say I traded away in surprise trade, or let's say I trade to somebody, but I told them like, hey, man, this is a hacked Pokemon, right? So here's the problem. Here's the problem. I, I'm not scamming them in this case, right? I'm telling them this is hacked. I'm trading you a hacked Pokemon. Do you still want to trade before it? Can I have your real Pokemon, right? This is still bad, right? Because here's the thing, man. It's as 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 a, an upstanding member of the Pokemon community, right? If you consider yourself um, someone who plays Pokemon correctly, the correct response when you see a hacked Pokemon like this is either release it or just just take it and put it in a box to rot forever, right? Um, by trading this back to somebody, even trading them knowingly and telling them, yeah, this is a hacked Pokemon, by doing that, you're just you're just keeping the problem going. Does that make sense? Because there's a chance now that this person's gonna go try and scam somebody else with this fake Lapras, right? Or there's a chance that this person is is gonna, you know, go take this into a ranked battle online and then fall into that bad category, right? So when it comes down to it, the scummy move is is yes, trading this to somebody, telling them it's real, lying to them, scamming them to get something really good in return, right? Like Having somebody trade you their legendary, their real legendary, having somebody trade you a real shiny Pokemon for this Lapras, that's a scummy move because you're kind of scamming them, right? But telling somebody it's fake and still trading it or, or dropping this back in surprise trade and just letting the problem continue to exist, it, it's not great, man. It's it's kind of the equivalent of if someone were to drop a, a trash bag on your front porch and instead of taking that trash bag and putting it in your garbage can you just take that trash bag and you put it on somebody else's front porch right it's it's a bad move it's it's not like the scummiest thing in the world that you can possibly do you're just moving the problem to somewhere to somebody else but it's not great man it's not great so if you see a pokemon like this a, a super clearly hacked pokemon just do the right thing remove it from the game altogether by releasing it or just or just let it rot. Just put it in a box and, and forget about it. Uh, if you do have a trash bag, though, I recommend you definitely throw that away and, and not let that rot on your front porch. Not recommended. <laughs> please, th please throw away the trash bag. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's that's my little note here about uh, trading hacked Pokemon. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay over on Pokemon Sword here because the next thing that I want to talk about is. A controversial topic. Some people would consider this uh, maybe in the more scumbag, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into the bad category as well, and that's cloning Pokemon. So I did a whole video dedicated to cloning Pokemon and how you can still, right now, to this day, currently in Pokemon Sword and Shield, still clone Pokemon. Like that, that video will be up here again, picture, link, something. Uh, but you can still clone Pokemon currently in Pokemon Sword and Shield, right? And here's a couple examples. And this is this is a huge issue because these Pokemon are real Pokemon, sort of, right? So here's an example um, of a hacked Heracross, right? Absolutely beautiful Heracross, excessively rare. It's a shiny Heracross. Not only is it a shiny Heracross, it is a marked shiny Heracross, right? And so I, I actually have a little video. We'll put up a little video um, here on the side as, as I'm talking uh, about you know how this was cloned and, and how the missing no and the god egg still exist. But 
The basic premise is you can clone real Pokemon. It, it's pretty difficult to do, but it's still possible in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And here's the issue. Here's the issue. If I take this Heracross, which is, again, real, and I were to clone this, I don't know, 50 times, let's say, 100 times, whatever it is, then I could go and I could trade this to, I don't know, another 50, 100 players, and it's, it's a real shiny Heracross. But now there's like 50 of the exact same Heracross, and chances are I'm taking whatever your best thing is, your unique best Pokemon, and I'm keeping that to myself. So let's say you trade me a... Oh, I don't know, man. Let's say a shiny Lapras, since we just had a shiny Lapras. Let's say you trade me your, your cool, real, shiny Lapras for this Heracross, which under all circumstances would be a fair trade, but you don't know that I've got literally 50 of these things, right? So it breaks the Pokemon economy. It, it is, it's super scummy. And at the end of the day, it devalues it, right? Because now if everybody has a shiny marked Heracross, it's not as cool. And one thing that, one, one complaint that I hear a lot is people are like, well, you can just, you know, what's, what's so wrong with this? If you I want to point this out. This Heracross is exactly the same as this Heracross, right? So if Nintendo really wanted to, if they really went out of their way, it's got the same PID, which is the Pokemon identifier. It's got the same secret ID, all of these things in the back end systems. So if Nintendo really, really wanted to, they could most certainly with Pokemon Home or with any other online check, check for, for duplicate Pokemon, check for cloned Pokemon, and it could definitely be something you get banned for. So I want to point out, Cloning Pokemon, definitely a super bad thing, super bad for the overall game community, the overall game health, um, and it's it's still actively a problem in in, uh, in Pokemon Sword and Shield. So again, please, 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 if you are one of the people who does have one of those god eggs, just, just don't, just don't, just don't clone, right? It breaks, it, it really does break the game. And it really just throw you into that bad category of cheating. Nobody is okay with you doing this. Nobody's okay in the general Pokemon community with cloning. So please, 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 for the sake of everybody else, don't clone. Just, just don't do it. <laughs> All right, guys, we're jumping back to the other screen. Uh, but again, yeah, so, so trading away hacked Pokemon, just giving somebody else the problem and cloning are two big no-nos that fall into the bad category. All right, we're back on this screen here. Uh, so the next thing that I want to talk about is again... Sysbot, man. So uh, I said before that selling Sysbot services put you in what I would consider to be the scumbag territory, right? And we, we talked about these discords, how how all of these discords are so proudly advertising that they have Sysbots. And I know for a fact that some discords that do have Sysbots sell access to those Sysbots or a premium Sysbot or all this other junk, right? So again, that's that's all in the scum the scumbag territory. What I would throw in the bad category is not hosting a sysbot or selling a sysbot, but even just using it. By just using a sysbot, you are creating hacked Pokemon and bringing hacked Pokemon to the game. These aren't real Pokemon. And uh, again, that's part of the reason why I made this video, right? This this sysbot video. And I talked about it a little bit in the first um, the first video as well, but. Anybody who's just going in and using this Sysbot is a part of the problem. You're creating more hacked Pokemon. You're making hacked Pokemon a bigger part of the Pokemon experience. You please stop. <laughs> like these aren't real. Nobody will think these are real. And in competitions, you won't be able to use these with um, without getting caught for, for the most part. Right. So please, please, please don't try and circumvent the system and basically cheat. It, it, it's 100 percent cheating, guys. And uh, remember what we learned from the first video. You guys ready? Cheating is wrong all right man but i've talked enough about sysbot again if you guys are curious you guys can check out that video uh to learn a little bit more about sysbot and and what that is all right so the next thing uh, that, that i want to talk about is i want to talk about hacking your own switch right so if you guys are uh aren't aware the way that hackers create hacked pokemon is by using a hacked switch. So there was basically a hardware exploit in all the originally manufactured switches and around 20, around before the 2018 timeframe that allows people to basically do whatever they want to their switch, right? You could basically install their software on there. You can pirate games. You can do all types of illegal stuff. Now there are some cool things you can do with a hack switch, such as running mods. Like you can do like a, a, a Nuzlocke challenge on Sword and Shield. So there, you know, there are, there are some good, cool things that you can do with a hack switch, but the, the people that I'm talking about right now are the people who are obviously using it to, you know, steal games, steal, you know, resources, buy games for free, like all of that crap. Not okay. Also super illegal, right? It's, it's, it's clearly like if I were to hack a switch and download a free version of Pokemon Sword onto my switch, super duper illegal. 
don't do that. But that's not what I'm talking about uh, today. What I'm talking about is hacking a Switch so you can bring in fake Pokemon, so you can bring in hacked Pokemon, right? Make use of the tools like PK Hex, PokeGen, all of the tools that the, the big end hackers who sell the Pokemon make use of all go through a hack Switch, right? So this is how they, they get the hacked Pokemon into the game it is via a hack switch. So please don't be one of those people, right? Even it, and, and even if you're just doing it for yourself, even if you're just modding your own switch, hacking Pokemon for yourself, using one of those hacking tools, that throws you in the bad category. You're not a scumbag because you're not necessarily using those hacked Pokemon for any anything other than your own purpose. But even then, you're still breaking the game economy. You're not playing the game it was intended. And pretty much everybody in the Pokemon community, if, if you're hacking Pokemon for yourself, you're, you're still pretty bad, man. You're, you're not a scumbag, but you're still pretty bad. So just don't do it. Just just don't cheat. It's Remember, it's okay to lose. <laughs> it's, it's, it's totally fine. So again, hacking your own Switch definitely throws you into that category. All right. The next thing that I want to talk about is using a bot to find a shiny raid den or a shiny seed. So in case you guys are curious... Uh, a lot of people don't actually know this. I haven't actually made a video on this topic yet, but this may be something we make a video on in the future, is using a bot to find a shiny raid den. So in short, I'm, I'm, again, I'll make a video about this later and explaining this in detail later, but in short, basically you can go up to a raid den, you can catch a Pokemon from that raid den, and then you can take that Pokemon, right? You can trade it to a bot, and then that bot will, will look at that Pokemon, it will break down its data, do a bunch of other a bunch of other computer magic, which I won't go into too much detail right now, and it'll spit out an exact date and time saying, this date, this time is when this Pokemon will be shiny. So then you go back into your Switch, you change up your date and time, you jump back in, you open up that raid down, and voila, it's shiny. So this is different than just randomly resetting your Switch and changing the day over and over and over again. And we'll talk about that in the next video, right? The next part. This is this is using external software again to circumvent Nintendo's in-game systems, right? So this is going out of your way, going into a game system, uh, going into a bot, having a bot analyze some data to, so that you can effectively cheat to circumvent the entire shiny hunting process. It's not okay, guys. It, it's not okay. There's, there's no way it's okay. Yes, the Pokemon that comes out of this will be real, but... It's, it's not okay. And it, it's 100% worse if you're going through this process with the goal of selling raid entry tickets. Again, that'll throw you into the scumbag territory. If, if you're doing this to sell raid entries, I, I don't even want to talk to you. But if you're just doing this for yourself to get shiny Pokemon or or g giving away these entries, it's still not okay, guys. It's cheating. You know, it, it's not the same as resetting your Switch over and over again. It's 100% cheating. It'd be like if uh, if A Drive or any other big shiny hunter. It, it'd be like if A Drive went up to a Pokemon and was able to say, "Oh, okay, so this will be shiny on attempt number 212." It would a ruin all the fun out of it. And B, like, what would even be the point? Like, you'd go up to a certain Pokemon, you'd check and say, oh, I'm not going to find a shiny one of these until 4,000 resets. All right, moving on. I'm going to go to a different legendary Pokemon. Okay, this one's only 312. Sure, let's go ahead and do that one. That would be the equivalent. Like, that would be what shiny hunting would become. And it's 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 horrible, man. It, it really does defeat the entire point of shiny hunting in the first place. So if you're just trying to catch shinies for the like for the sake of them being shiny and, and you're ignoring the, the hunt and everything that goes into it, you're not playing the game for the right reasons, right? So again, please, please, please don't interact with third-party software just to find when a shiny den is going to be shiny, right? When a raid den is going to be shiny. It's it's, it's just not great. It's just not great. All right, the next thing I want to talk about in the bad category is hacked raids. So hacked raids have been patched, um, but before they were patched, you used to see stuff like this all the time man and this is absolutely disgusting so a lot of people didn't realize because they were patched fairly quickly a lot of people didn't realize just how bad hacked raids were but i mean look at this look at how much this just would destroy the entire game so this is a shiny uh zacian right and you could basically get it get that you get 99 of literally any item or all items throughout through catching this raid like it completely broke the game like absolutely broke the game getting max of every item uh max of these xp candies everything you'll have is level 100 getting max pp maxes everything you'll have will have pp max like that should that's supposed to be a decision on what is and what is not able to have maximum pp and people people wonder why pp maxes are a sign that i check for with 
with hacked Pokemon, right? Because of stuff like this. Um, also, like, it's it's just it's just a mess. In this particular case, like, uh, I don't even know what this sketchy website is, but in this case, this particular guy would have fallen into the scumbag territory because they're actually selling raid entries. Uh, so, so yeah, this is, this is definitely the scumbag territory. I'm just using this as a, as a great image to show you how much of an issue that these hacked raids are and, uh, what type of things they were using to bring into the game. Huge, huge issue. You can get shiny locked Pokemon with these when these were around. You can get the, the God egg, the missing nose when these were around. Huge problem. Super glad these are gone. Nintendo took action against these pretty quick. They banned a bunch of people because of these hacked raids for either hosting them or taking part in them. So great job. Nintendo's response to hacked raids was actually pretty quick. And I'm glad that, they, that glad that it was because usually, uh, you know, uh, big boys over there at Nintendo are typically a little, a little too slow when it comes to catching hacked Pokemon, which is, I guess, partly why I have to exist to tell you guys about these, because if they were faster, I guess I wouldn't really have a purpose. So, job security. All right. So again, guys, hacked Pokemon, definite issue. All right. So th there's one last thing that I want to talk about in the bad category. Remember, we're, we're talking about the, the fine, the bad, and the scummy. So the last thing that I want to talk about in the bad category is hacking key items. So one key item that I want to talk about is the Liberty Pass, right? So you could, and you can apply this logic to Shiny Charm, Mark Charm, anybody who hacks key items, because key items... Uh, the most valuable ones, like the Shiny Charm, for example, you have to fill out the Pokedex. It takes a lot of time to fill out a Pokedex, right? So you have to fill out the entire Pokedex uh, to get to be able to use the Shiny Charm, right? It, it's your reward for doing it. So just by hacking that in, circumventing that process, I, again, it, it's bad, man. You're, you're a cheater. We know you're cheating. It's, it's not okay. The Pokemon community doesn't think it's okay. You might have convinced yourself that it's okay. It's not okay. And the other category will be hacking event key items. So the Liberty Pass is one of these event key items. So it was released in Pokemon Black and White as a way to get Victini, right? And it was only released in a very specific time window. So for example, North America, uh, it was released between March 6 and April 27, 2011, right? So it was basically a way to access a special item and catch Victini. And a bunch of these existed. There was one for Arceus. There was one for Celebi. Uh, like there was a bunch of really cool event items that, that were available and already programmed into the game. You'll notice these don't really exist anymore, right? In, in later Pokemon games, they just started, they just stopped doing this because so many people were cheating and hacking to get these special event items that the game developers literally stopped coding in event exclusive areas because people would cheat, get these event items and gain access to these areas and it would just ruin all the fun because they would, they would do it even before, sometimes even before the events were even released, people would cheat to get these items, get to these areas and they would ruin the whole fun of the event. And as a result, now our events, our event Pokemon, we just get them via trade distributions or at GameStop or however they, they give them out. So it's actually it's actually a real shame that cheaters actually ruined this one for everyone because now we don't get to go to these special coded events, these, these cool areas. Like we got to go into the Forest of Time with Celebi. We got to go to a special island to catch Victini. These are gone. The, the developers stopped programming these into games altogether because cheaters ruined the experience by getting these items, getting access to these areas before they were supposed to and ruining the experience. So now we just have to hit surprise trade, search for a code, or sorry, wonder gift, sorry, goodness, mystery gift. We would just search for a code and that's now how we get our, uh, our special event Pokemon. No more cool side stories, no more cool event items. Uh, just that's it. So again, this is why I throw this one into the bad categories is because cheaters literally changed the way developers approach this altogether. We get less areas now in the game for events. It's, it's a shame, man. It's a shame. It's a shame. So definitely deserving to be in the bad category because they literally ruined this, this cool aspect of the game for everyone. Alrighty guys, that'll be it though for, for the bad section of uh, the video, this three part series of the fine, the bad and the scummy. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Is there something I missed that you guys would consider bad, but not scummy? Or do you guys think that something that I considered bad should have been scummy or something that I considered scummy should have been bad? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, next part will obviously come out pretty soon and that will be the final part in this three part series, which is the fine. So. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, of course, if you guys want to make sure to get notified when that part three does come out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, click that bell. So, all right, guys, I will see you guys back for part three and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.